Ladies and gentlemen, it is Monday, the 21st day of September 2015. I am your host, Alex Jones. We're going to be live here for the next three hours. Joining us in studio is my friend, Pat Riley. We also have Jesse Ventura joining us coming up in the second hour. We'll have open phones for that. Pat Riley, uh, who is a personal trainer and a good friend of mine, I'm friends with his uh, wife and he. We go out tubing and outdoor stuff, uh, fishing, things like that. He just took off three and a half weeks. He does this every three or four years to go to Europe. And this time he went to Croatia, Turkey, and other areas where Europe basically borders the east. And he witnessed the so-called refugees face-to-face. And we've seen the stunts where the man throws his wife and kids on a train track. And then it's implied that the police did it. And the media plays along with this. He witnessed this for himself. And then he talked to local Turks. He said, oh, he's done that twice this week at that restaurant. A guy gets up on a fifth-story balcony, knocks out the window, and then sits there banging his chair, leaning back over while his wife and children stand at the bottom as a crowd gathers and says, he's going to kill himself if I don't get money. And they start giving her thousands of dollars, the equivalent of that in Turkish and euros and dollars. And she just sits there with wads of cash flying at her at the luxury hotel. And here's Pat staying in a really cheap hostel, a really cheap place with his wife. She can you know, save money and travel more. Worked for his money, and then he's watching the giant con game. And if it's a perfect metaphor for the West and how we're guilted into everything we do. Truly sickening. He was in Istanbul uh, when he saw that. He's going to describe what he witnessed uh, when he joins us in the last 30 minutes of the broadcast today. There's a lot of huge news, obviously, but I remember about a month ago, Joe Biggs covered this from his military sources and a few fragments of news that he was covering out of Afghanistan that Hillary was covering up, we wrote articles about it as well at the time, covering up sexual abuse of children when she was the head of the State Department. Well, that's now in the New York Times yesterday, September 20th, U.S. soldiers told to ignore sexual abuse of boys by Afghan allies. And basically, it's the exact same people Joe Beggs reported on a month ago, you can pull up our article headlined, Hillary covered up sexual abuse or ordered sexual abuse to be covered up uh, in Afghanistan. So again, Infowars.com, just on the very tip of the spear of breaking news and information. Uh, this is not a joke. Saudi Arabia has been chosen to have the UN Human Rights Panel. <laughs> Probably get a feminist award or something from, from Gloria Steinem, but because I've got short hair, she'll say I'm the enemy of America and, and women. Uh, but that's how they operate. Uh, Kerry says we're going to accept 85,000 refugees. See, first it's 10,000, then it's 15,000, then it's 25,000. I said that two weeks ago. I mean, I just know their formula. We're going to take 10,000 refugees. I'm your Lord and Savior, Barack Obama. I said so. I'm going to rename them this mountain. I'm going to shut down these power plants. I'm going to open the border because I'm King Obama. Well, first it's 10,000, now it's 85,000, then it'll be a million, then it'll be 2 million, then it'll be 5 million, then it'll be 10 million, then it'll be 20 million, then it'll be 30 million. It's 40 million illegals right now in the country, running around arrogant, thinking everybody's there to serve them, thinking everybody screwed them over. Just all a complete joke. What a joke. So that's, oh, but don't worry, during the Emmy Awards, they attack Donald Trump as racist because he doesn't want to pay for everybody to come here and have their babies for free, even though nobody else does that. And of course, Saudi Arabia financing all this won't take one of these darling little refugees. Ladies and gentlemen, we are broadcasting worldwide on this September 21st, 2015 worldwide transmission. Former Governor of Minnesota Jesse Ventura will be joining us to talk election 2016. My friend Pat Riley, who just traveled extensively through Eastern Europe and Turkey, saw shocking. Uh, events via the precious darling migrants, uh, refugees, as they're called, including mock suicide attempts, 
stage to make the public donate money. And we've seen the migrants staging dead bodies of children, throwing children on railroad tracks, attacking reporters, and then running from them so they can be tripped and then say that they're victims. The list goes on and on. In Europe, if you get smacked upside the head by a big rock and you criticize it, you are arrested. The former Stasi secret police have been reactivated. That's mainstream German news. They now work for Facebook and alert the government if you criticize the open borders for 5,000 euro fines. That's over $5,000 and or 120 days in jail. Unbelievable. Meanwhile, McDonald's is leading the effort to promote migrant aid. Oh, McDonald's is always pushing, taking your guns, opening your borders, a true world government organization. Thousands more migrants pour into Austria as 13 drowned off Turkey. Saudi Arabia has still not taken one single refugee. Refugee crisis to test EU at summit of divided leaders. The eastern countries are being criticized for not taking more. You've only taken three, four million in the last year. You should take them, advertise everything's free, so 20 million come. And then 50 million. And then 100 million. Because it's your job to pay for it. And the Swedes have to house people in their homes, the government's proposing. And they're raising new taxes across the EU to pay for it because it's your job. No one else is in the world but Europe and America's job to pay for everything. And now you see the guilt society. Now you see it. Eastern European leaders in war of words as migrants pour across borders. Reuters. Meanwhile, look at this headline. Not a joke. Saudi Arabia chosen to head UN rights panel. That'd be like hiring a top pedophile to guard children. It'd be like hiring Jerry Sandusky to run a children's orphanage. Well, I guess he did kind of run one. That's the whole point. The fox guarding the hen house. Fury after Saudi Arabia chosen to head key UN human rights panel. Saudi Arabia is basically like North Korea with trillions in oil. Total freakville, totally corrupt. Their people aren't that corrupt, but their government is an absolute joke. We have a teenager sentenced to death by crucifixion for taking part in anti-government protest in Saudi Arabia. Criticizing the government and illegally possessing a firearm. Faces death, the mirror reports. <clears throat> but don't worry, they don't let women drive cars and they'll execute you for teaching the gospel. But they're our ally, our gallant ally. Meanwhile, Kerry again says we would accept 85,000 refugees next year. See, first it's 10,000, then it's 85,000, then it's a million. That's how they get you ready for it. Just standard psychological warfare tactic. That's out of AP. Rand Paul blames Hillary for refugee crisis. Yes, she helped quarterback destabilizing the Middle East. Absolutely true. That's from the Hill newspaper. Rand Paul is on target. 15,000 more refugees to be resettled in the U.S. on top of the 85,000. Donald Trump says it wasn't the Swedes who blew up the World Trade Center. You have extremist Muslims. They are a class by themselves. He's being called racist for claiming that jihadist terror is Muslim. Well, it is. You know, I didn't follow the kid with the clock who, who said he built a clock to take it to school. And then it turns out his dad is a top activist who's pulled stunts before. And within hours of it happening, the White House, you know, wants the kid to come to the White House. And it turns out he didn't build the clock. It's it's just the guts of a digital clock from the 70s. And he wouldn't respond and tell him it was a clock to cause the freak out. And that's why cops took him in was because they wanted to know if it was basically like a bomb threat. Hoax exposed. Muslim student Ahmed Mohammed's briefcase clock is 1970s digital alarm clock. A total staged event. I don't normally agree with Bill Maher, but coming up, we have that clip. We're going to be playing it. Uh, where he says, look, look, it didn't look like a clock. And you've got him showing it to people, wires hanging out of it. Looks like something out of a movie on purpose, in my opinion. But, but this is how they stage everything. Of course, uh, 
Obama didn't have any of the families killed at the recruiting centers by jihadists to the White House to speak to them. No, no, no. And that ties into the next story I'm going to detail more uh, coming up later in the hour. I went to check into some syndication while I was there. That's why it worked perfectly for the TV show slash radio show, but also uh, to be able to attend a friend's wedding up in Omaha, Nebraska. I've driven through Omaha, but never, never stayed there. It's a nice town. And I'm flying out yesterday, and they tear open my bag, and, and they, for 30 minutes, search everything. And then they say, what is this? Do you know what this is? And I said, yeah, it's Concord grape jelly from a farmer's market I went to. I bought some of the grapes, too. I'd already eaten those. I said, you can, they said, well, why do you have it? And I said, well, you see the, the squash and the peppers and the things I bought here. I mean, my briefcase was half full of produce. That's what I do. I'm, I'm into farmer's markets. They said, well, you can't have it. It's a liquid. And I said, well, actually, it's, it's grape jelly, but it's, 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 a, it's a solid. Or, but I said, whatever. Uh, they said, well, we're going to have to search you and do all this stuff to you again. And it went on and on. And it's just such a joke, this, this baptism of slavery, this induction into serfdom, this training that I'm a criminal and I'm a person that's guilty until proven slave. Not innocent until proven guilty, not even guilty until proven innocent. I'm always suspect. I'm guilty, guilty, guilty. And so after they'd gone through all this rigmarole, they wanted to put me in the body scanner. And I'd already been basically patted down. And I did it because I was wanting to go ahead and see what the scanner was like after five years of demonstrating against it and protesting. I've talked on air about maybe going ahead and doing it just to experience it so I could speak about it. And then, oh, they got real mad and said, something's in your back pocket. And I said, well, you told me to go in there with my boarding pass. They're all laughing at me and stuff. And I just realized how much trouble this country's in, but especially because the people in Omaha, I guess, are so conformist that they thought it was really cute to have me there 30 minutes. And they waited till the last minute and said, you're going to miss your flight. You're going to miss your flight. And I said, fine, just makes the story bigger. And then finally, they're announcing my name over the loudspeaker as Southwest had the door open. They closed it when I walked in. The flight took off five minutes late. Southwest waited for me, to their credit. And I flew back to Austin, Texas, crammed in amongst the rest of the proletariat and coach. And while I was... While they were taking off, I was sending the photos to Buckley and the audio file, my report. While it's taxiing, I filed the report yesterday uh, that aired on the uh, news about an hour after I filed it. So great job for the crew getting that out. The story's up on Infowars.com. I had the headline, uh, TSA security alert over grape jelly. That's the headline I wanted, but whatever. Paul Watson has the headline, Alex Jones harassed by TSA over jar of grape jelly. And some people are saying, what'd you do, pull a stunt on purpose? No, I just forget I'm not in a free country, and I'm in a hurry getting out of my motel, and I just stuck the produce and the grape jelly in my bag. I'm sorry I'm such a criminal. Well, the mainstream corporate globalist media three months ago began announcing that Russia was to abandon Syria to jihad, Saudi Arabian, Qatari, NATO forces made up of al-Qaeda and ISIS. We, of course, reported that the Russians were moving more ships and weapons in, that more aircraft were landing. The Russians are building at least three airfields, one of them a forward air base to deliver helicopters and air support uh, with Marine forces as well as Russian Spetsnaz or special forces. And Spetsnaz just means special forces, period, in Russian, both Marine uh, and Army special forces. This is an exclusive report in English language. It is only in the Russian news as of now or at Infowars.com. Top story, Infowars.com. Russian Marines battle ISIS in Syria. ISIS militants attack Russian airbase, according to Russian media. Russian Marines clash with ISIS uh, in Syria on Sunday, according to Russian media. During the fight, the Marines allegedly killed. And again, uh, they're going to print the article off and bring it in here. And I'm going to be able to break all that down for you. During the fight, the Marines allegedly killed several militants.